So let me welcome you another, uh, at our um, another webinar we have dedicated this time uh, to Madrid uh, student housing market. Uh, my name is uh, Philip Wagner and I'm working as a business development manager here in Bonard and I'm having a pleasure to, to present our latest finding about this uh, exciting uh, market and as well as the be the host and chair uh, for the panel uh, that will follow. So let's dive uh, right into it. Uh, for those who don't know us, uh, we are a market intelligence and uh, strategic development firm. Uh, we have been established uh, back in 2007. So uh, represents a 15 years of experience uh, in student housing. Um, more recently, we have uh, sort of uh, expanded into a co-living, uh, senior living and built to rent uh, as asset classes. We provide data and uh, assessments. And uh, basically, our goal is to uh, help uh, the client uh, leverage our knowledge and experience and, and support them throughout the process of investment. Uh, this webinar dedicated to Madrid, as I said uh, at the beginning, is part of our uh, city webinar series. Uh, we have planned for these years. For those who have joined the previous uh, one, uh, back in February, we have presented data, our latest findings uh, for Milan, but we have planned for uh, another cities, as you may see on this slide. Warsaw will be one uh, which will follow, uh, and then we'll like to have a closer look uh, on Berlin, uh, Paris, and Lisbon. And let's dive into, into the Madrid. So, uh, as an important part of uh, assessing uh, the market, uh, we'll, we'll have a closer look on the student population. Uh, data you have seen on the slide um, covers several muni municipalities uh, within the autonomous community of Madrid, so that goes for Greater Madrid. And Madrid is a home to 56 universities and colleges of which 10 are globally uh, ranked. Uh, estimated 26% of students arrive from other Spanish, uh, of other uh, parts of Spain and another 15% uh, of students are international students, top countries of origin being uh, China, France, uh, Italy, uh, states uh, and Colombia. We'll see um, when it comes to uh, parts uh, of uh, international students uh, lower share than in some of the much student markets in Europe. For, for example, in London, there is a 32% of uh, internationals, Vienna uh, hosting 30%, Berlin 22%, Greater Paris, 20% uh, and Lisbon, uh, for instance, 17%. Uh, Total number of students uh, split into domestic and international, as you can see on the slide, uh, all student groups show growth over the last three years. Although domestic students population increases uh, at slightly higher rate. One of the reasons uh, it may be a uh, lack of English uh, thought uh, programs uh, in Spanish universities. We'll go to the next slide, uh, providing an overview of uh, PBSA market or existing supply. So there is a growing share of the private PBSA. Uh, we have map and have a full understanding of the market. There is 148 uh, student uh, residencies uh, with a little over uh, of total uh, 19,000 uh, beds. Private residencies uh, represents uh, 68 uh, and represents uh, about 41% of total bed capacity in the city. The three uh, biggest private operators, uh, which are Resa, uh, Yugo, uh, and as well uh, Mikasain by Urbania, together account for 68%, so almost 70% of the 
of the private stock uh, in Madrid. On the right hand side, you can see the map and the distribution uh, of the private PBS and a non-private PBSA across the, across the city. Let's go to the next slide. Um, with the data we constantly collect and regularly update, uh, we are able to do the different analytics. Uh, on this example, uh, on this slide, we are showcasing um, all the city residencies where you can see the capacity uh, versus a number of uh, facilities. So on the higher half, uh, you see public PBS8, uh, that's 80 assets. Uh, on the left-hand side, there is a capacity. And on the lower half of the lower bottom of, of this chart, you'll, you'll see private uh, PBSA, which represents 68 uh, assets. And the little dots are uh, reflecting number of facilities uh, on offer. For example, uh, what, what's uh, interesting that there is only 13%, one three of all the private assets that are uh, actually big residences with capacity more than 300 beds. So as you can see uh, on the public stock, we'll see average of 148 beds. On the public, on the, sorry, on the private uh, stock, we'll see on average uh, assets uh, with 127 beds. However, uh, the situation is changing and uh, the share of big developments in the city will be growing considering as well that uh, institutional capital is uh, interested in, in a scale and the sweet spot for such an investor, uh, it's around 250, 300 beds per asset. We also had a look on uh, the pipeline or the future stock uh, coming to the market. Uh, you see that there is a, uh, there is a, together as many as 3,800 new bets expected in the foreseeable future. Uh, and that's uh, 3,800 bets uh, are expected by the end of 2024. You see the listing of uh, provider uh, with the status uh, year of opening or plan opening together with the bed capacity. So altogether you see that uh, considering uh, our own student demand forecast based on the historical data we have uh, collected over the years, uh, the provision rate from current 5.7% uh, in the city is estimated to reach 6.4% in 2024, which uh, allows for, for uh, considerable investment as well, uh, or, or the room to grow uh, in Madrid. We'll go to the slide number eight, um, uh, rent levels and monthly rent per person. You can see we have uh, divided uh, room, uh, room types or basically rents per room type. Uh, you see on the bottom uh, sort of uh, pink uh, colored minimum. Uh, on the other side, there is a maximum rent. And as well in the middle, you see indication for an average rent uh, per single room, per double room, uh, single and suite, which is most common uh, on the Spanish market and or especially in Madrid and single studio. Uh, that's uh, basically what's relevant for Spain, uh, where the student accommodation offers, uh, and both from both private and non-private providers often include meal plans, which is very uh, special when it comes to Spain. And most commonly it's a half board or a full board uh, on offer, options costing on average between 150 up to 350 uh, euros and making up a significant portion of the advertised rent. We have uh, had a closer look uh, on all 148 PBSAs uh, in Madrid. 
And the findings are the 98 uh, offer meal plan as part of the accommodation package. That represents 66%. 36% um, of those operators are private. New product uh, in the city also offers meal plan included in the package as well. Uh, for example, RESA buildings open after 2000, 2019. New operators entering the market either offer it for the additional charge or include it in the package. As I mentioned before, Madrid is offering a variety of room types to students uh, and the most represented being an N-suite uh, rooms offered at 72% uh, of all residencies. Price range uh, is quite wide, as you can see, allowing students to find the offer they like. Uh, generally, private providers are able to charge higher rents versus, versus non-private providers. And we we'll, we'll can see on average 19 to 23% uh, for single, double, and n-suited rooms. On the right-hand side, that 874 euros uh, represent a uh, benchmark, uh, and that's an average monthly rent for a single studio in privately uh, rented market. So that's privately owned and rented apartments in uh, Madrid. On the next slide, uh, we have uh, provided this uh, interesting uh, visualization of uh, monthly rent versus facilities on offers versus uh, capacity. Quite often we do a, a primary research uh, that uh, we interview students and basically primary research shows the importance of a range of quality um, of the facilities for, for students and how important they are when they making their decision uh, where to stay with a sufficient number uh, of facilities, residences are able to maintain uh, higher prices. And as a good example, we can take for instance, uh, a gym that is currently available at 54% of all private PBSA and it's already a must have uh, for all recent and expected opening uh, by key private operators in Madrid. We'll have a, uh, a discussion as well with, with our panelists later on about the product. And finally, uh, we provide an international uh, sort of perspective and understanding. Uh, we'd like to uh, provide a benchmark of uh, market saturation. As I mentioned, Madrid, has a, a lot of students, uh, 300, 336 students. As I said, the lower share of those are internationals. So they are in the majority uh, domestic students. Uh, however, the provision rate, as you can see, it's 5.7% uh, at the moment with expected uh, increase to 6.4, as I mentioned previously in, in two years time. And you see the comparison with other uh, European markets, um, which is most closely Madrid, I believe most closely to, to Milan, the one we presented in uh, February. Um, while Paris and Berlin are more saturated, as you can see, but still behind the expectation and uh, with, the, with the room to grow and uh, to invest in those markets. With that said, I would uh, conclude my presentation. And in case you'd like to have a slide deck, feel free to request uh, through, uh, through the channels, uh, through the, our email at data at bonar.com or on our, um, our website, uh, bonar.com slash presentations. Uh, where the recording from this session, uh, from my presentation as well from, uh, from the panel uh, will be available uh, right after this, um, this webinar. Finally, uh, it's my pleasure to, to welcome our panelists and key stakeholders uh, from Madrid uh, when we will discuss uh, the, our findings and basically current market situation. Um, 
I have a, firstly, I have a news to share that uh, Jeffrey uh, from Urbania won't be able to, to join us as he had an emergency this morning and he's sending his kindest uh, regards and apologies, uh, which will leave, uh, leave us four, uh, including me uh, with Paulina uh, from uh, Living a Living, uh, Pablo from uh, Amro Rio Partners, and uh, we're having a Juan as well uh, from Grey Star Spain. So I'll stop sharing the screen. And I would like to ask our panelists to switch on the camera. Great. And uh, from start, I would like to ask uh, every, every panelist to uh, briefly introduce uh, themselves uh, to tell us a bit more about the role and uh, about the organizations they represent. And perhaps we could start with the lady. So I would ask uh, Paulina to, to kick off. Thank you, Philip. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, Pablo and Juan, it's a pleasure to be with you on the panel. Um, so my name is Pavlina Chandras. I am responsible for Livensa Living. For those who may not know the brand, um, Livensa Living is the B2C brand of um, Temprano Capital. Um, we are um, a direct or either indirect owner and manager of 19 assets across Spain and Portugal, uh, three of which are due to open by September, by three of which are, are due to open by September 22. That represents a total of um, 7,000 beds right now in operation um, throughout Iberia. Actually, two of the assets which we are opening um, in September are located in Madrid, uh, where we also have another one in operation uh, already. Um, and there we, we already have, um, under various stages of development or in the pipeline, uh, another five assets due to come to the market in the next years. Um, so. Thank you. Thank you very much, Paulina. Uh, maybe Juan. Thank you, Philippe. Um, good morning, everyone, and, and Paulina, Pablo. Good to see you as well. My name is, is Juan Costa. I am the managing director for Greystar in Southern Europe, and we are the owners and managers of the of the Resa platform. Resa is is the largest provider of, of PBSA in Spain, with around eleven thousand five hundred beds, and out of which around three thousand are in Madrid. We have eight assets um, at the moment, and we have another one in under construction, which will open next year. So. Looking forward to, to have uh, an interactive session with everyone today. Many thanks, Juan. And finally, Pablo from Amro Partners. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, well, hi, hi everyone. Uh, good morning. Um, thanks, first of all, uh, Philip Goras and all the Bonar team for the, for the useful presentation. And what well, a pleasure for me to share this panel with, uh, with uh, such renowned uh, people like Pablina and, and Juan. So my name is uh, Pablo Garcia Morales. I'm investment director for, for Amro Real Estate Partners. So Amro is a, a investor, developer and operator within the VTR and the student housing uh, sectors with presence in the UK, uh, Spain and Portugal and coming uh, within also uh, Netherlands and Germany. Uh, we have a track record of around 3,000 student accommodation beds and around close to 2,000 units in DTR um, with a total GDP of around uh, one, 1 billion euros. In Iberia, we have uh, nine projects within different stages of the development. And uh, well, in fact, two, two of them uh, currently operating, which accounts for close to 2,500 beds. Um, in Madrid, uh, we have uh, we have uh, one project which is located in the, in Getafe, in the south of, of Madrid, of uh, 216 beds, which is due to open in in September 2023. 
and we are really looking to 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 increase our presence in 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 the city because of, of all the data you have uh, uh, clearly uh, presented, Philip. And lastly, just uh, well, as a, as, a, as a business, it's important to mention that we are quite uh, focused on, on on being a net carbon zero by 2025, and all our projects are being delivered with the highest uh, ESG credentials. Many thanks uh, to all of you uh, for a nice brief uh, introduction. Uh, before we dive deeper into the questions uh, I, I had prepared, uh, I'd like to announce as well that uh, during the session, we'll have uh, polls uh, prepared. We'd like to ask uh, our precious audience as well. So in between the questions, there, there will be three polls, actually. Uh, and I, I would be pleased to have your answers as well. So we'll, we'll have even more intelligence and market sentiment at the moment <clears throat> when it comes to Madrid. Uh, I will ask my colleague Goras then to pull the question, uh, the first polls. But let's go to, to the first uh, sort of topic I have prepared and I'd like to discuss. I have touched base in, uh, in the presentation earlier, and that's a very strong uh, pipeline. Uh, in the city with some uh, large scale asset about to enter the market. Uh, I mentioned overall uh, 3,800 bets uh, that's together in planning. So I, I believe there is a 3,100 uh, bets under construction with a, with a sizable portion of those expected to become operational this year or already. And given the forecast increase uh, in the student population, there, there will be still considerable investment potential before, before the market reaches the, the point of saturation. The question here will be, what investment outlook do you expect for the city uh, in the coming years? And maybe we could start again with Paulina and keep the same order. Um, thank you, Philip. So, well, it, it, what we have seen we have seen in your study, and I think we all we all um, who follow a little bit Madrid um, do see the, the the pipeline. One one thing that I think is important to mention, maybe from the start, um, when it comes to Madrid, I guess it's the same for all big capitals, um, is that M Madrid is a city as a whole, uh, but I think we need to um, look at it as a number of smaller markets put together. So um, we have the, the, the different campuses spread around. Um, we have a concentration of residences uh, and schemes uh, sometimes either, either already in operation or coming up um, to in the pipeline around those, um, those campuses, uh, mostly the peripheral ones. Uh, but on the other hand, we also have a very large uh, amount of student population um, located more or wanting to live closer to the center of Madrid, where um, to a, a very big extent, the offer is in, in terms of organized modern um, PBSA is much lower and where it is a lot more difficult um, to have new investments and have new developments in the years to come. So I think overall the market of Madrid um, still has potential, the numbers show that. However, I think we need to um, every time be very much aware of, of the different locations uh, or micro locations which, within the city, um, which might show very big interest um, in some places where actually there is scarcity of, um, of uh, possible uh, land or, or buildings to be reconverted, and others where um, there is already um, a, a, big, a big pipeline coming, uh, and there may be um, saturation in terms of the number of students located in those specific campuses. Thank you. Uh, Juan, would you agree? Absolutely, 100%. I think the the overall pipeline for Madrid is actually not so large considering the number of students as we just saw. However, as Pavlina was saying, it is concentrated in the, in the suburban areas of, of the cities or in certain sub-markets. 
So you, you might get a, a bit of a misleading uh, figure on the pipeline. Um, probably um, anything in the core of the city or within the city rings. I agree with Pablina that there is a scarcity there because of the lack of available land or the lack of available um, uh, buildings to, to regenerate into student housing. So it, it, Madrid has kind of a that barrier of entry into the city um, because of either historical, urban, or, or planning restrictions. On the other hand, um, land is more available around the city, and, and that's where you see newer and larger development projects coming live. Um, but still, I think if you just take a very simple number of students, total beds, still very old, very old stock, still beds are needed. There's still a lot of money, I think, CapEx to, to invest in, in regenerating existing stock. Probably that's that's an interesting play for people that can get access to, to the stock. And also there is a lot of international uh, interest in Madrid that probably the first stop is Madrid. And sometimes because they're not successful, they go to secondary cities. But um, I do see a, a strong interest from the investment community for the city um, going forward. I think probably the question mark is how, how and, and when they will access uh, the Madrid market. Thank you, Pablo. Over over to you. Yeah, well, uh, not too much to add. To be fair, I mean, I totally agree with what uh, Pablina and 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 Juan and Juan have said. Uh, so Madrid is definitely a a quite um, healthy market in terms of uh, student numbers. Uh, mobile students are increasing and increasing. International um, interest from students is increasing and increasing. Um, it's true that uh, the pipeline is not that big, but because of uh, what both Pavlina and Juan have mentioned regarding the purely the city, the, the, the city of, of Madrid, which there is a big scarcity of, of available uh, opportunities. And, and that's why most of the pipeline is located within uh, the different municipalities uh, um, from Madrid, which most of them are quite also healthy in terms of numbers of students are and quite well communicated uh, by by public transport with the with purely the city so so the students is like yes they want to live in the city because of course it's is better but at the end of the day if you are also just uh, minutes walking from the university even the, if the university is in the outskirts but you are also quite well communicated by public transport is something uh, that uh, that fits with them, no? Um, and also regarding the, the the investment sentiment for Madrid, I mean, it's it's, it's absolutely it's absolutely there. No, I mean nowadays Madrid is uh, within Spain and well Iberia, of course, is 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 probably the tier one city. Is in the in the radar of every, of everyone, and 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 also because of the asset class being more and more institutionalized. Uh, is is definitely a, a city where 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 there is there is room for 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 doing things. To be fair. Thank you very much to all of you. It will definitely require a lot of creativity, as, as we discussed the other day. Uh, with that said, I would ask Goras now to to pull our first first uh, question. And I will read it loud together with the options, uh, considering that some of you may be joining us uh, through the mobile uh, device. So our first question is, what is your current engagement in, in Madrid, uh, PBSA market? Uh, the options are, we are present, considering to increase exposure. Uh, we are present, but not considering to increase exposure. We are not present considering to enter the market and we are not present only observing the market uh, KPIs. So these are uh, the options. And if you, if you please uh, can participate and we will have a, uh, we will have then um, overview, overall overview of the, of the results we'll share. I will allow maybe well, one minute uh, for you uh, to take part and uh, we'll wait for for the, for the results
and we'll have the results. So 38% uh, of our audience is, uh, is present and considering to increase exposure. Uh, and 6% uh, is present and not considering to increase uh, the exposure. So there are two sort of uh, polls uh, there. 32% uh, is not present, but considering to enter the market, which is quite interesting as well. And 24% is just uh, observing. Uh, thank you very much. With that, well, we may move to uh, second questions, and um, that uh, goes uh, to uh, quite discussed topic always, and that's occupancies. So, considering we are behind uh, the pandemic, let's hope uh, for that. And uh, although pandemic has had a notable impact. Uh, to on student enrollment and student mobility, uh, universities and colleges switch to online education. There were some fears that that will be the model, which proved uh, that that will not be the model. And uh, students like to come to the destination and visit the destination. Nevertheless, occupancy rates at private PBSAs uh, remained uh, high. Uh, even during those uh, crises, and as providers were quick to respond uh, to the health and safety measures uh, and challenges. Uh, the question will be: What occupancies uh, level did you did you record for for this academic year? So that's 2021, 2022, and what is your prediction for next academic year? If you already have some 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 indications as booking has started, so uh, maybe we'll keep the same order. So we'll start with the Pavlina again. Well, I think probably this is more for 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 Juan to kick off with because he has a lot more a lot more presence. Our uh, for twenty one twenty two, we only have um, a bit over two hundred beds in operation. Um, so it's a very small scheme. Uh, it's a quite consolidated scheme um, that we've had for a while. Um, it was um, operating under the collegiate brand until around two months ago. We have just um, taken over the management and done the rebranding and we're marketing through Livenza Living um, academic year 22-23. So um, our occupancies traditionally there um, the last few years, including uh, COVID, have been very good. And, and actually the outlook for this year um, continues to be the same. As I said, it's a small asset. Um, the other asset that we are currently commercializing, which is in the south of um, uh, Madrid in Getafe, um, well, Pablo mentioned, mentioned the, um, the location before. Um, we're just opening this year. We have started selling. Um, we're seeing some strong demand, but it's still quite early days. Um, and then we have another project, which is a very different scheme. It's, it's more of a flexible kind of accommodation scheme. It's not gonna be only focusing on the PBSA or student demand. Um, and there we are a little bit further behind in terms of commercialization for the following year, but I, I don't think it's going to be a very typical um, PBSA product um, to actually compare by. Uh, th thanks, Pablina. Pressure on me then. So, um, then, look, we have, as I said to you, we, we have, let's say, 2,500 beds in, in Madrid, and we have almost 500 in, in the pipeline. Um, I think um, last year was, we were pretty much back to normal. So, we're talking about occupancy rate of 97%, uh, which essentially is, is full occupancy because we always leave a couple of beds for short stays or or we use it for other things. Um, you have to consider that Madrid, perhaps different to other European cities, um, we rely primarily on, on local students and, and our share of international students is, is lower. So we were not affected as much as other markets, perhaps like London, where, where traveling was, um, was relevant or the origin of the students are becoming perhaps more from Asia or, or India, where things were a little bit more challenging. So we we have a bit of impact from some of our Latin American markets, and perhaps some certain countries couldn't couldn't come, but the reality was was overly compensated by by local demand. 
Uh, for this year, we expect um, a very strong year. We are in the middle of of the, um, of the leasing uh, for for the 2022-2023. The the demand is is very very strong. Um, I think um, probably everybody just put COVID behind us. Now we we have other things to deal in in the world, right? Uh, like inflation and some of the challenges in around Europe. Um, but ultimately, I think um, it's going to be another strong year for the Madrid market. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, uh, not, not, not too much uh, to add again. Uh, I agree with uh, Juan, of course. Juan and Paulina have more exposure than, than, than us in, in Madrid. I can talk more generally of uh, of all the other Iberian assets we have and agree with what uh, both were saying in terms of there has been a, a really recovery after after the COVID and in fact the the preletting for for the next academic year even before uh, the the selectividad marks uh, available is is being quite strong quite strong and I think that the the key thing also to mention uh, to one of one's um, point is that most of the mobile student population in Iberia is is local, I mean, um, domestic mobile uh, uh, student population. Of course, there is a big bunch of international students, but the majority of the demand comes from, from these uh, this, uh, national mobile students, which at the end, of course, were less affected or are less affected uh, by any any type of, of restrictions, no? in terms of the just the one asset we have in Madrid, which of course we want to uh, increase our presence in the city, I think that the the, the projections we have in terms of uh, occupancy are are, are quite healthy. Um, just specifically about the Getafe market, but I would say generally on the on the Madrid. Uh, the fundamentals are, are strong and, and, and this will drive, of course, the, the occupancy levels and, and the, as one once was mentioning, uh, this 90, 96, 97% occupancy is more than achievable, probably not in the first year, but uh, for sure in, in the second year. Many thanks. Uh, let me just confirm that we have seen the trend when it comes to occupancy across the uh, majority of the markets across across the Europe and occupancy levels uh, going north of uh, 95 percent, uh, as you have mentioned. So that's quite a health predictions and hopefully um, having COVID behind us and other other stuff we will dealing with at the moment will be will be uh, shortly behind us uh, as well. Uh, with that said, let me, let me ask Goras to pull a second question. We'd like to ask uh, what, what our audience uh, is thinking or what was the perception when it comes to occupancy rates. So I will read it again. What occupancy rates do you expect for 2022-23 in Madrid? <clears throat> And there is a, like a 5% uh, interval, so 95 to 200%, 90 to 95, 85 to 90, 80 to 85, 75 to 80, and so, so on. Uh, so I won't go that, that low because no one is expecting that low occupancies, I hope. Uh, for the next academic year, we again uh, will we'll wait for, for a few seconds. Uh, that audience can uh, uh, participate and vote. And after that, I will ask uh, Goras to share um, to share the results uh, and outcomes. So we'll see what, what our audience is uh, thinking about the occupancies for next academic year. Okay, and we'll, we'll have the results already. So. 34 percent, uh, 95 to 100%. So that's a very optimistic together with the 25 percent, 90 to 95. So that's almost uh, 60 percent uh, of our audience is, ex is expecting higher uh, occupancies, higher than 90 percent, which is 
which is uh, very optimistic. Thank you. Thank you very much, Gorast. And thank you for, for you all uh, to, that you have voted and uh, take the part. With that, uh, let's move to a next question. Um, when we compare uh, Madrid to more mature markets like uh, UK, Germany, or even, even France, uh, Madrid still represents a sort of maturing market. Uh, and in the context of the of that recent high investment activity, and as we discussed previously, that uh, it's really really uh, hot market with, with a lot of potential. How do you see the development of uh, initial and uh, exit yields levels in Madrid as compared to other markets in the years to come? And I'll go with the same order, Paulina, if you, if you may. I think I need to pass this on to one of the gentlemen. They are the ones. Okay. Uh, so, so uh, who I can, I can, okay. I can, I can give it a try. But then, next question, we we start with Pablo, if that makes sense. <laughs> so. um, well, we, we 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 as a firm, we we acquire and develop property across Europe, including the the UK. So we kind of have a little bit of of the benefit of of looking at yields um, and different metrics, perhaps it's also important to, when you when you talk about valuations and um, just not talk about yields because the yields can be a little bit misleading, but talk about, you know, value per bet and, or, or euro per square meter, right? Um, the, actually the, the, the last few transactions that we have seen in the, in the Spanish market, if you try to back solve the yields, this has been more acquisitions than we're talking about not development yields, uh, Philip. We can talk about that later. But let's say product transacted in the market in an open market process, and they, they have been quite competitive. I, I would probably argue that they are below four already uh, in some cases, and um, with with values on on a per bed or per door, depending on the on the configuration of schemes of of reaching anywhere between 160, 170, even 180 thousand euros per, per bet. So, so the yields have been compressing um, quite uh, substantially since the majority of, of us came to the market probably five, six, seven years ago, right? So um, the trend has been compression. You still offer spread to other mature markets, as you were saying, Philippe, if you look at, at the French market, um, yields are even lower. Um, if that 50 bips, um, 40 bips, 60 bips, it kind of depends on, on the location, but you still find a value on a yield basis and on a per unit basis. Um, that's needless to say with the UK where, where it's a market which is so liquid that the fact that you have so many transactions, um, the valuations um, are trading uh, really, really high. Um, is, that, is that a trend that will, will continue? Probably, I think we are, we are hitting a, a point in the market where where things will soften a little bit so either they're stabilized don't really see uh, a lot more room to to things go a lot lower than this uh, for the time being um so so people need to be careful by the time that they enter the market about the the valuations but on the other hand we already talked how difficult it is to enter this market so the transaction you have seen is is the investors very aggressively entering the market and paying sharp yields just to get an access to the Madrid market, which is also a very valid rational at times, right? Um, the way that we see yields at exit, this is a, a, a house methodology. We always uh, underwrite a yield expansion. We always try to think, you know, who's going to be the next buyer of, of our properties, right? What is the view of interest rate? Where are the, we're in the market? So always, always we underwrite the yield, expi yield expansion. In some markets, we are more aggressive than other ones, but we, we do think the yields will move up, outwards at exit, let's say in a five to seven year business plan. That doesn't, mean, that doesn't mean that the value is going to be lower because you will also have rental growth and you know the rents will compensate part of that yield movement. So, um, but pure, looking purely as cap rate, um, we think they will move um, out a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I mean, from our, from uh, our side, we are we are um, of course investors and developers. Uh, in addition to operators, we are saying that the development yields 
uh, in addition to, to the purely the exit deals are, are really are compressing are compressing um, so of course the owners expectations uh, now versus uh, three four years ago when the market ma was less um, mature and less in the radar of of uh, more and more people uh, were different also with the with the construction costs where uh, what they are unfortunately of course there will be uh, there will be a, a correction on these uh, construction costs increases uh, that we have or we are facing or we have faced during the last uh, the last the last term um but definitely uh, those yields are, are are compressing versus uh, versus previous previous years no in terms of the purely the 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 exit uh, cap rates of course you need to take in consideration the different things of course interest costs and everything um but i think the 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 asset class in general is uh, is really um, getting more and more again institutionalized uh, and that's why the yields are 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 compressing i think in madrid uh, you can easily be a sub 5 uh, of course if you are in the city center you can be uh, even 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 below uh, i would say around the, this 4.5 or even less 4.25 where if you move a little bit uh, uh, to the outskirts to uh, different municipalities uh, definitely uh, you should be within uh, this sub five uh, exit cap rate no and in terms of uh, and i agree with what uh, juan was was mentioning that is not only uh, purely the cap rates but also uh, the, the the euro per square meter and the euro per bet and and we are seeing this definitely within the different uh, or the more recent transactions uh, that has been uh, published, no? that uh, if you just take a look to the euro uh, per bet compared to other years, you, you see that uh, the, the, the the price increase, no? the price increase. So, uh, which basically, of course, reinforces uh, what we are all saying about uh, Madrid in general as a, as a healthy market, as, as, well, as a quite uh, market in, in in, in the radar of everyone. Many thanks. Uh, many thanks. Uh, it's very, very interesting. Uh, with that said, I would ask Goras to, to pull our last uh, polls uh, and uh, we'll, we'll ask this time what uh, the opinion of our audience. So how do you see yields uh, developing in Madrid over, over 2022? And Options again, I will read uh, loudly at a uh, strong increase, slight increase, stable, slight compression, or uh, strong compression. So how do you see yields developing in Madrid over the 2022? And after, after this, we'll touch basically maybe a wider economical context as well. Uh, we, we discussed and touched base earlier after after these questions and we'll have uh, still 10 minutes to discuss so hopefully we'll, we'll manage to go through all the questions we have prepared for uh, this session so Goras, if are you ready uh, feel free to share the outcomes and uh, 33 percent uh, uh, choose the slight compression 30 percent stable and 28 percent uh, slight increase uh, even so thank you very much thank you for taking a part dear audience and uh, with that we'll move uh, to next uh, question given the wider economical context and increasing uh, you know construction cost uh, as we as we've seen across the markets, uh, and as well ever increasing inflation, uh, I'd like to touch base on on rents. Yeah. Very recently, we have uh, conducted uh, our research on our part with the uh, with the private PBSA operators. Uh, well, we'll find out that across Europe already some of them announced higher rents for for September uh, two thousand twenty two. In Spain, uh, we have monitored uh, 31 PBSA operators 
private PBSA operators across uh, five cities uh, in Spain. Uh, we, have, uh, we have done Madrid, Barcelona, Valencia, Granada, and Seville, and notice 4.8% increase on average for a, for a studio uh, product. I'd like to ask, what, what is your observation of the, of the current situation or perhaps a prediction for, for months to come? Do you expect rather uh, steep growth coming closer to the start of, uh, of the new academic year or, or like sort of balanced slow growth? I'm asking because as well, just to compare and benchmark, obviously that's a different uh, situation, but uh, in C, in Poland, we have seen uh, rents increase uh, close to 12%. Obviously, they're outside of eurozones. That there are many, uh, many other uh, you know uh, metrics uh, come to to mind. But what what is your prediction when it comes to or strategy, perhaps when it comes to rent for the next academic year? And uh, let's start with the Pablo, as you said, Juan. I'll go with you with your advice. Yeah, yeah, sure. So, um, I mean, uh, unfortunately. I think we are we are far from those uh, those uh, Polish levels uh, which you were mentioning, twelve percent. I think uh, that's that's not really real for 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 the beer market. Um, on the other hand, I think there's there's uh, there's uh, room for this uh, rental growth. I think the rental growth must be adjusted versus the the initial projections because of course the situation the macroeconomic situation is uh, is what it is but there is definitely uh, room for increasing increasing rents of course also you should go case by case no um in, in for example in iberia madrid uh, valencia uh, granada malaga quite really healthy healthy uh, cities once there are others but because of different reasons are not that uh, that strong but uh, as, as a general comment i would say uh, the, the rent growth uh, is, is still is still there and, and, and should be there maybe considerable uh, lower uh, well not considerable lower but to be adjusted again versus projections but uh, uh, to be implemented within the within the business plans also of course the the, the key thing is uh, is to drive the uh, the the occupancy level, no, uh, and and to manage a little bit. Uh, what's what's your what's your uh, preference, no, in terms of increasing the rents or 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 have the the scheme uh, occupied? No? Juan, please. Hi, um, so I think rents will go up. Very simply, put in lead, um, operators can try to mitigate the impact of, of inflation or higher development costs. And there will be a little bit of aversion to increase rent because, as, as Paul was saying, if you increase rents massively, you, you might have a lower lease up or, or you might have a, a higher occupancy. But the reality is everything is increasing including at times income from people. I think we we are a little bit on this fallacy that everything goes up and income from people doesn't go up. And the reality is we all manage in business and we all see the pressure that we also have on income, right? And I appreciate that some of these parents, they will have to make a, a bigger effort to pay the share of the accommodations. But the reality is that's just another effort alongside efforts that they're making and they're also being partly compensated on the income side. So I think there will be reluctancy to increase rents initially, but operators will find that if you need to maintain a healthy margin, um, you will have to translate part of that, uh, you know, construction costs increase or, you know, OPEX increase back to the rent. I think that is fair. Um, we, we are for-profit organizations that we need to provide a service. That service needs to be high quality because the demand from the students uh, needs to be high quality. The demand from the staff needs to be high quality. The demand from the municipalities and all the, the requirements that we have from sustainability are um, high quality. The outcome cannot be that the cost needs to be borne by, by the operator or the owner of the building, right? 
that doesn't mean that it's not going to be challenging. So I'm, I'm not just saying that this is going to be a walk in the park and, and everybody can increase, increase rents 10%. But, um, but the reality, I think um, we have to be very honest and transparent with all our st stakeholders about this, right? And what you don't want is, is an operating business which have you know, decreasing margins. And, and over time, that is uh, it's going to be showing a lower services and lower quality, ultimately lower occupancy. So it's kind of a, you need, you need to make some tough decisions. And, and hopefully you, when you did the, the acquisition or the development, your, your, your initial rent was uh, assessed appropriately. So, you know, there is room a little bit to, for growth, but uh, in my view is that rents are going to go up. Um, Thank you, Juan. And uh, over to you, Paulina. Um, yeah, well, I think I, well, I agree with both um, Pablo and Juan. It's, it's, I think uh, what we're seeing is higher inflation, utilities costs. Um, well, to Juan's point on, on, um, on you know, people's income also increasing, um, it's also something we're seeing. But I think what Madrid has, if we are to think about um, it as, as a specific sort of market, is that, um, it has a very wide range of, of accommodation for students um, where you find all types of price ranges. So I think as, as, we, as, as rents do push up um, and I, we are not seeing um, dramatic push up, um, I mean, dramatic changes, um, nothing I think um, close to 10 or 12%. Um, so as, as, as prices do sort of go up, I think we are gonna see shifts in the choices that students make or parents make. So um, those who can afford um, to stay in the same accommodation um, will, but if otherwise they will look and they will find for the moment in Madrid, um, they will find alternative accommodation, um, which is closer to their budget. Um, and also I, I think that as, as Madrid is, a, is an attractive city and an attractive market, there is gonna be an inflow of students who will also be able to, to afford um, probably the higher end or the more expensive uh, accommodation options. Um, still, uh, I agree with the point that we are, we're not in the situation where um, anyone feels comfortable with um, drastically increasing rents from one academic year to the other. I think that there is a little bit of a hold back still coming from, from COVID years. Um, and there is a little bit of restraint. Um, but the way the situation and the global outlook is, um, it's, it's very difficult to, to keep rate rents below inflation, um, or even higher. Many thanks. Uh, many thanks for all your um, opinions. Uh, you know, sharing sharing your thoughts with us. Being conscious uh, about the time, we will just now at uh, twelve uh, o'clock. So, and then sixty minutes we will dedicate it to this discussion uh, <clears throat> is gone. We have uh, I have one more question, but I'm not sure whether whether you. Uh, have still availability uh, according to your uh, agenda to, to go through that question uh, or shall, shall we conclude? Uh, are you okay with the, an extra five have, minutes? I have an extra five minutes. Yeah, up to you, up to you, okay. Philip. I just want to touch base quickly because uh, the, we, we had the, this discussion about the rents and then we will... We'll, we'll, I have uh, sort of mentioned it in that uh, presentation or we touch base on the, on the product and I'd like to ask, you know, with everything set uh, up, up to uh, now, uh, whether or how are you adjusting uh, your product to match students' preferences, uh, whether you are seeing, uh, whether you are seeing any, you know, shifts in student needs and preferences. Uh, or what they value the most? What, what, what are the preferences you see and come across? And, you know, we have this slide about uh, the number of uh, facilities and, and, and enable you to charge higher rent. So what is it, what is it you see 
uh, amongst your students, among your tenants that they prefer when it comes to product itself and the services uh, being offered within your residencies. And uh, Juan, please. Hey. I think the well, it's a it's a broad question, right? It's a it's a big one. Um, for Spain, I think we need to be mindful that um, yes, services are important, but ultimately there are a couple of I think KPIs which which are key for for our students and and the parents. Remember that Spain, perhaps opposite to other markets, uh, their parents have a lot of influence of of where the students live. So I, I would say the basic ones are are, are location. Um, in Spain, typically students tend to commute a lot less or move less than other markets in Europe. So having a good scheme close to university, close to the city center is fundamental, disregarding then the amenities that you offer, right? Um, the um, studios, at least in our case, uh, after the pandemic, um, they have been favored over, um, you know, doubles rooms. So we see a phase out of, of, you know, even if they're, they're cheaper, and there's a strong need to have, you know, studios where they, they can be self-contained, they can be taken care of, and, and that is that is key. Clearly, Wi-Fi is very important as well. And, and in a way, also, pricing remains uh, very sensitive for, for a large group of, of, of our tenancy base. So, in a way, is you know, it's the very basic things of why we're doing this. You know, do you have a the right property in the right location with the right price, right? I think then when you're starting to add the the, the amenity space, um, I think what they they value more, at least in our case, is the actually the the soft element of the building is how are we managing the community? What kind of activities do we do, right? And and you might have. Uh, some of our best buildings actually they're not the nicest ones not with the with the nicest pool or or the best terrace or 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 the best cinema room it is more about how do you interact as a community especially in the last couple of three years where where a lot of these these kids they have a lot of restrictions on the way they think they can do right so they value a lot that so i think there will be a an increased demand on on the s so the, the s the social part of the of the business will will be needs to grow and needs to be more important. I think the, the environmental part um, is going to be just not a cliche, just as a building part. But they feel the need that they want to live in in buildings which which are sustainable, and they all their activities around what they do they also be needs to be um, sustainability driven. So the E part will be will be key, and I think you know certain things in my mind at least you know if if you have a cinema room very funky um, that perhaps in the previous cycle was perceived as important is, is perhaps you know less in demand today um, than being filmed part of, of one thing, right? If, if that makes sense what I'm saying. Over to Pablo. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree with, uh, with Juan uh, regarding all this uh, E and S part of the ESG uh, white, uh, white picture regarding the uh, I also agree with what uh, Juan was saying regarding and it's true that after the COVID uh, all these uh, doubles or two dios or you know some sort of rooms where, where you serve uh, something are, are, are being um, uh, slightly affected I would say versus the, the individual studios because of course after the uh, the, the, the COVID, uh, the, the mindset of having your proper individual studio with your proper uh, kitchenette and everything is 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 quite uh, market driven. But on the other hand, I think, uh, and at least from our side as, as as developers and operators, we always try to give the the more flexibility to students as possible, not just in terms of uh, room offering, but also in terms of, uh, for example, catering options. No. Uh, as you were mentioning uh, in the in the presentation of the report, the, the, the Spanish market is 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 cutter driven, um, and I think the the offer of of this canteen with these uh, meal packages, let's say in half board or full board, is uh, and related with this amenity point you were mentioning, I think is is also key. Regarding the other amenity um, uh, things, 
you will have within all the new product. I think all the new product in, in general, uh, even if it's from uh, from Livensa, even if it's from Resa, even if it's from from Amro, from any other peer, is going to be is going to, is going to be a great product, of course. And I think the amenity space uh, uh, is important uh, to have all this gym, all these uh, student rooms, uh, cinemas, if possible, uh, swimming pool, outdoor areas. But the but the yes s part that Juan was mentioning, I think is is also quite important. And, 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 and the students really value that. So that you as operator offer um, activities, offer um, yeah, things, things, things to do, to do and, and socialize, no? I think that's important. And Paulina. Uh... I think, um, well, very quickly, I think just to not take everybody's time, um, I, I will just maybe add it a, a very, a very a slightly sort of um, um, not different, but uh, but sort of looking at this from a different perspective. I think what is what is a little bit um, specific to Madrid, um, which you may not find in other in other smaller cities, at least in, in in Spain or Portugal, is of course location is the number one um, factor that I think students value, but also directly or indirectly location affects the choices that the investor and developer makes in terms of the amenities that they offer. And you mentioned in your study that you have, you're seeing um, a lot of small buildings, um, buildings which are probably in central, in more central locations in Madrid with less square meters available and usually less common areas available or less amenities available. Um, however, due to location, they are probably able to offer um, due to location, the, op the possibility for students to look for these alternatives in their neighborhood. Um, on the other hand, bigger schemes, we're seeing they're being developed more in the outskirts of the city. That is where it's less easy to find a, maybe a gym or a pool at three minutes walking. Um, and therefore, more square meters available and more of a need um, to create this community within your um, within your building and actually having the size to actually build on this community. Uh, but I think for sure the underlying factor um, across and what is, is a differentiating factor or will be a differentiating factor for more institutional or more organized um, uh, operators or operators with bigger scale is being able to give this extra experience which comes with community, with, which comes with a more organized, um, we, we would call it student life plan um, that gives them a special touch, which may not be exactly the same as in the building next door. Great, uh, many thanks for all your answers, thoughts, uh, comments, opinions. Uh, uh, I really enjoy the session and discussion. So in, on the behalf of uh, Bonart uh, and myself, I'd like to thank you. Uh, it was great to have you. Uh, really, really honored to, to share such a knowledge with, with the industry. Uh, looking forward to, to another opportunity to, to meet uh, you and uh, discuss uh, the market, being at the industry events or, or our, our webinar in the, in the future. Uh, just repeat for the audience that uh, slide deck uh, you can request. Uh, you should have a link in the chat uh, and as well. Uh, you can come across the recording and uh, request the presentation on um, bonar.com slash presentations. And looking very much forward to have you uh, maybe to our upcoming webinar, which will be dedicated to Varsa early June. Uh, you will be all notified. Uh, that's as well. Very interesting market. Well, we'll have a closer look on. And with that said, I uh, wish you a great week ahead and all the best for, for the next uh, academic year. Thank you very much uh, to all of you. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.